Welcome, and thank you for joining us on Abundant Living. Receive the Word of God as your sure foundation. The anointing of God in you is the key ingredient to working out the plan He has for you and your family. Now here's Joanne. Hi, my name is Joanne Young. Thank you for watching today. Today we'll be talking about how to hear from God. How do we hear God's Word spoken to us? The word comes from Romans 10, 17, and it reads, So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So, we're talking about how to hear from God. There are five ways I have... Um, written about hearing how we hear from God. The first is we hear from God by reading His Word. God speaks to us through His Word, okay? First of all, we have to prepare ourselves to hear from God, okay? One, you have to be, you know, you get born again, you ask Jesus to come into your life. Two, you spend time with God to hear Him so He could speak through you. Okay, the Holy Spirit revealed things through you, through the Word of God. So by you being born again and coming to know the Lord God, the Spirit of God comes to live with you, and He makes all things true. So He will um, help you to understand the Scriptures. He will help you to understand the messages, the passages, and give you interpretation. And He will help you how to take God's Word and apply it in your own life. So that's one way how we're here, is from the Word of God, by reading His Word out loud to ourselves. And through hearing uh, ministers like this program, ministers teaching you and the Word of God and, you know, just pouring out you what God has placed on their hearts and then, you know, to relate to you, to help you to grow spiritually, physically, emotionally, and in all areas of your life. So we hear from God, one, through His Word. We hear from God, two, directly from God Himself. Okay, when you're walking right before the Lord, when you're doing your best to serve Him and you're doing your best to first, seek first the kingdom, okay, then God um, speaks to you, you know, he, he, of course, you know, if you, you're on the wrong path and you're not honoring God, you're doing things to dishonor him, well, of course he won't speak to you because he is a holy God, okay, so, but when you're serving him the best as you can, he will speak to you, and he, you can, he'll speak to you directly from him, himself, you can hear his voice, okay, in Exodus 33, just as Moses did, Exodus 33, I'm going to read verse 9 through 11. It says, And it came to pass, when Moses entered the tabernacle, that the pillar of the cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. Verse 10 says, All the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door, and all the people crossed, all the people rose and worshipped each man in his tent. Verse 11, So the Lord spoke with Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friends. So that's an example that God, just like he spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend, God wants to speak with you as well. Face to face, God wants you to hear his voice. He wants you to know that he is your father, okay? So God does speak today to us, okay, in different ways. And that's the, the second way is um, he speaks to us face to face. Just as he did um, Noah, okay, just as he did many, many people um, in the Bible. Okay, the third way we hear from God is by way of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. And like I've already mentioned about when you get born again, the Spirit of Truth comes to live within you to empower you to hear from God so you can have your spiritual language. That's where your spiritual language comes from. Um, speaking in tongues is your spiritual language, just like the Apostle Paul said that I pray, he told us in his word, in the word that he prays in the spirit more than he does in um, regular language. So the Holy Spirit, when you pray in the spirit, the Holy Spirit is praying for you to God. And the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit prays the perfect will of God to fulfill the call that God has for you. Because we don't know what to pray about. Our minds are limited as far as what to pray about. But the Holy Spirit knows everything, you know. The Holy Spirit is God. So the Holy Spirit knows what to pray for when we pray in the Spirit, in the, um, in the language, in our spiritual language, what we need at that time. Whatever we're going through, the Holy Spirit prays for us. Whatever things we need, He prays for us. 
because he knows everything and he knows what we need prayer for because our minds are limited. And that's why it's important when you come born again to get filled with the Spirit of God so you can pray in tongues so the Holy Spirit will pray with you. It's very, very important. Um, but the evil one, he has um, made praying in the Spirit like something bad. And, but he knows that if people don't pray or don't seek to pray in the Spirit, that you know it would be a big blessing to them. Okay, it would be a tremendous blessing to them. Things would happen in their lives that, you know, they couldn't even imagine because the Spirit prays for us. And that's where the power is, is through the Spirit. So our spiritual language is very, very important. And that's why the evil one hinders many people from seeking it out or even desiring it. Okay, um, verse um, number four, how do we hear from God? We hear from God also by angels that speak messages to us um, from God. In the book of Luke 1, 27, we see here about the angel Gabriel, that he was sent from God. It tells us in verse 126, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth. And we know that Gabriel, God sent the angel um, to go and speak to Mary and to tell Mary that she was going to um, bear a son empowered by the Holy Spirit and that they were to name him Jesus. So that's one way that God speaks to us. He sends angels not only then, He sends angels now to speak to us and to guide us and to direct us, especially when we're walking right in Him. Number, um, that was number four. Number five, we also, God speaks to us also by the way of prophets. Um, just like God spoke through prophets, you know, in biblical days, He also has prophets on the earth as well now that he sent prophets to us to give us a good word, give us a bad word, just to give us a word from the Lord. Um, we see in 2 Samuel um, verse, chapter 12, verse 1, the prophet Nathan was sent to David right after David had committed a sin against the Lord when um, David desired Bathsheba, which was his neighbor, but she was already married to Uriah, who was the Hittite. So David being the mighty king that he was, he desired to marry um, Bathsheba and sh through this um, adulterous relationship, she became with child. And so David wanted to cover it up. So he um, arranged, as a, the word tells us, the word of God tells us that he was the king. So he was over the soldiers, he was over the army. So he told the, the captain to put Uriah, who was a, a soldier, a soldier, he told you, um, the captain to put Uriah, um, Bathsheba's husband, at the front of the army when they went into battle because his plan was to kill him so he could take Bathsheba to be his wife. So that didn't please right, you know, that wasn't right before the Lord because he, one, he broke the commandment, I shall not kill. So God told Nathan, the prophet, go to David and tell David this. And so Nathan went to David and told him, you know, what he had did. And then he told him the judgment that was going to come against his house. And he told him, he said, the sword shall not, never depart from your house, David, and the child that um, Bathsheba is carrying will surely die. So he went to give him, you know, uh, it wasn't a very good report to David. Okay, and the Bible tells us that after that, David fasted and he repented and you know, David was a man after God's own heart. So even if, even though he sinned, even though he did this great sin, he humbled himself and he asked God to forgive him, and God did. So God sends prophets to give us good messages, to give us um, uh, warnings, you know, to give us bad messages, good things that we've done, um, not to um, condemn us, but to get us to change, to, to get us to repent, to get us to humble ourselves and ask God to forgive us so he can cleanse us, so he can put us right back where he wants us to. And that's what God does. He sends prophets, okay? And he still does today. Um, God uses um, many men, many women, women to give messages on his behalf. Number six, God speaks to us through visions. Okay, just as he did in the biblical days, he's still showing people visions. God's word says in the last days that he'll pour out his spirit upon all flesh and that men, and, and they will have visions, and the old men they will have visions, and we will have dreams, and our children will prophesy. So there's a lot of visions and a lot of prophecy going on because we are in the last days, and God is preparing us for the return of His Son, Jesus Christ. 
And um, in Acts 9, verses 10 to 12, God sent Ananias, uh, I'm sorry, Ananias to Paul to restore his sight. Now, um, we know the, the story about Paul, that when Paul, um, he was out to kill Christians before he came to the Lord, the Apostle Paul. So he was killing Christians everywhere. Um, he was stalking them down, you know, he was going to their gathering and imprisoning them. And well, anyway, on his way to Damascus to do that same thing, the, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to him and said, well, you know, um, why dost thou persecute me? And he fell to the ground. He said, um, Lord, who, you know, who, who, is, who are you? And Jesus revealed himself to him and Jesus made him blind, so he was blind. And so he, that changed his whole life. Um, because he was against Jesus. He was against the, the things of God. You know, he thought people who were following Jesus were going against God, okay? Because they didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah um, when he died and rose again. They, they still didn't believe. So anyway, God did that miraculous thing to Paul, and Paul was blinded. And Paul was in his room praying when uh, God showed Ananias a vision and God spoke to Ananias in a vision and said, go to um, Paul. And God told him what street he was on. Okay, the street was called Straight. And he told him to go to, the, um, go to that street, to that house. He said, through the vision, he told Ananias, um, the apostle Paul is praying. You know, and he, I, he has seen a vision of a man named Ananias coming to him and restoring his sight. So God not only spoke to Ananias in a vision, God was also speaking to Paul in a vision so that his purpose and his plan could be fulfilled. So he sent um, Ananias to go to Paul to restore his, his sight. So that's when God shows us visions, okay? That when we have a vision that's of the Lord, it comes to pass. So just as Paul saw that vision, it came to pass. Ananias did go, the Bible says, Ananias did go and lay his hands on Paul and Paul's sight was restored. And that's when we know Paul's life changed. He became a great apostle. He wrote most of the books of the Bible. He is a man of God, powerful man that God used. And that shows us that God can use anybody, anytime, any place. It doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter what you've done, what you've said. God can restore you. God can clean you up and he can use you for your glory. So, you know, that's the kind of God we serve. We serve a gracious God. We serve a loving God. Okay, that he can take the brokenness of our past, you know, and he can just make it shine, you know, make our future shine because he doesn't look at the past because there's a transition when you leave the past into the old. There's a transition you go through to being a new person in Christ for God's purpose and for his glory. And that's what he did to Paul through that vision of healing him. And the Bible says that the, when Ananias prayed for him, the scales of his eyes just failed. And God showed him to prepare him to receive Ananias in the vision. So God will show you visions and dreams to prepare you for what is to come. So when it does happen, you say, okay, well, God showed me that. So that is of God. So he will show you many visions and dreams in advance um, before it happens to prepare you for your future and to let you know that this is, this is God's doing. And that's how God does that. Um, also, um, in Habakkuk, when um, God told Habakkuk in Habakkuk 1.1, 1, 1, the, uh, the Bible says, the burden which the prophet Habakkuk saw. Habakkuk was a prophet um, in the Bible that he was a man of God. And he saw the destruction that was all over Judah at the time. He saw that they were rebelling against God. You know, they weren't following God anymore, following his commandments, following his rules. They weren't following anything, and there was destruction all around him. There was, um, you know, just bad things happening. There was evil thing happening, especially to those who were trying to do good, those who were trying to follow God. And so Habakkuk cried to God, you know, in a prayer. It really was a prayer of complaining to God, you know, how long will you allow them, you know, how long will you allow evil around us without your judgment coming to them? But God showed Habakkuk, you know, uh, spoke to Habakkuk in a dream and told him and um, what was going to happen, okay, in the vision, I'm sorry, in the vision, he told him what was going to happen. 
um, that judgment was going to come to Judah because they had turned from God, they had rebelled from God, evil was all around him, and God was going to judge them because of that. And God answered Habakkuk, Habakkuk and told him that um, I'm going to send the Chaldeans, which is, was the Babylonians. They was going to go into Babylonian captivity. And so Habakkuk was saying, how long shall we suffer? How long shall I see this evil before me without you seeing it, Lord? Don't you see? So he was complaining to God. So, you know, God hears our prayers. When we come to him, he hears us. He knows what we go through. He knows what's happening around us. And so in um, Habakkuk 2, verse 2 through 3, the Lord answered Habakkuk in the, in the Bible reads, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for a point in time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. So God told Habakkuk, Habakkuk, in the vision, you know, I've told you, you know, write it down what's going to happen. Write this down what I've told you in this vision, you know, that um, Judah is going to um, receive judgment from me. I'm going to raise up the Chaldeans, okay, because I'm going to use an evil people to, to, um, to, um, to actually um, come against them so that they can know that I am the Lord thy God. Because when we rebel against God, God moves his hand of protection and he allows evil. He can eat, God uses, can use evil to get us back to him, to bring us back to him so we can know, okay, we need God. And God does that for us to realize I need God. If, you know, if he's not in my life, bad things will happen to me because he'll remove his protection. And then evil people, you know, will come after me and bring me where I don't want to go, where I don't want to do. So that's what happened to the children. And God was telling the prophets, okay, write the vision down. You know, it will surely come to pass. It may tarry, it may take a while, but it will happen, what he was telling Habakkuk. And that encouraged Habakkuk. And then Habakkuk went from being sad to praising God, to the joy of the Lord was his strength. You see, he sought God. He, that's what David said. You know, I sought the Lord and he delivered me from my fears, all my fears. So Habakkuk sought the Lord of the evil that was going before him. And God answered him in a vision and said, write the vision down. It will happen. So when God shows you visions to yourself, you know, of things in your future, things that's going to happen around you, okay, write it down because it will happen. It will come to pass. Write the vision down that visions God give you, okay, write them down and it will come to pass. It will happen. And a vision is like a flash, you know, like you, you like a, like a TV screen just appearing before your eyes. It happens really fast. It's like you're watching yourself or you're seeing things, and that's what a vision is. It just happens right before your eyes. You could see it like a, a TV screen, then it goes away, you know, and then dreams are like longer than visions, you know. A vision, you can have a day vision where you're just um, sitting or driving and something will just flash. You'll see a picture in front of your eyes. That's a vision, okay? It could be in the day, in the night, anytime God could show you a vision. It doesn't matter at night or during the day. Okay, so that's what happened. God wants us to write our visions down, and um, it comes to pass. Okay, and another way God leads us um, is God speaks through us through dreams. Okay, God can speak through us through a dream. Um, just like in Matthew 1, 19 to 23, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Um, we know the book about Mary and Joseph. The Word tells us about Mary and Joseph. That when God, the Holy Spirit, when um, Mary, of course, was a virgin, and she was um, prophesied that she, you know, was going to, the angel told her, Gabriel told her she was going to bear a son and name him Jesus. And so, um, well, when Joseph found out, you know, that she was carrying a baby, and he's like, well, how could this be? You know, I've never, I've haven't, I haven't known my wife. Okay, I haven't been with her. So how could this be? And so. He, you know, evidently he didn't believe that the Almighty God, you know, was going to use his fiance to bring the Messiah into the world. So he had doubts and he wanted to put her away. The Bible tells us if you read um, Matthew 1, 19 to 23, the Bible says he wanted to put her away secretly because he was an honorable man. OK, and he, you know, he's like, I'm not going to marry her. I'm going to put her away secretly. You know, I don't believe this. 
And then that's when God sent the angel. It tells us here in verse 20, But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream, saying, Joseph of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And verse 21 says, And she will bring forth the Son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So the angel came in a dream to Joseph to tell him that this is of God. The pregnancy that Mary has is of the Holy Spirit. It's of God. Okay, don't be afraid to take her as your wife. So God used the angel that used um, that dream to convey a word to Joseph. And that's how God does to us. He can speak to us in a dream. He can show us uh, dreams to encourage us, you know, um, show us in a dreams. He can also show us a dream to warn, warn us of something of danger or whatever God uses to convey a message, okay? So those are the way that he, um, that he speaks to us and how we hear from him. Um, I've already said that through his word is one directly from him by the way of the Holy Spirit, by, the, uh, by an angel to give us a message, by a prophet, by visions, and by dreams. Okay, so those are all the ways that God conveys a message to us. But we have to prepare ourselves to receive a message from God. Okay, we have to seek Him. We have to spend time with Him. We have to talk to Him. And then He will um, talk to us through the Holy Spirit. He will show us visions. He will show us dreams because He's our Father. He wants to guide us. He wants to direct us. He wants to show us what his plans for us. He'll show us the future and it will happen in dreams, just like he showed uh, Joseph in a dream, you know, that um, he was going, his, um, he had a dream of, of sheaves were bowing down to him and the moon and the star and that represented his father and his brothers were going to bow down to him. Way years, years, years before it happened, God showed Joseph and God shows you and I today you know, dreams before they even happen. So when God shows you a dream and you know it's from God, write it down because it will happen. It will come to pass. And God speaks to us that way through visions, okay, through night visions or through day, um, day visions, whatever way he speak, speak to us, just write it down. I know God, um, when he first um, spoke to me, I know I was shocked because I, I got born again. And then um, that same year, I was hearing God's voice, and it was so funny because um, I would be sleeping, and um, I would hear, you know, someone speaking to me, and I would wake up, and I would say, Jerry, Jerry, did you say something? You know, remind me of um, Samuel and Eli when uh, Samuel would go to Eli when God started talking to him. So anyway, I would tell, wake up Jerry and say, Jerry, did you say something to me? I remember the first time it, it, it shook me. It surprised me. I didn't expect it. And then the Lord spoke to me, and um, I woke up Jerry, and he's like, no, I didn't speak to you. So um, I went back to sleep, and then it said it again. And then Spirit of the Lord said, um, um, he told me, he said, um, thou he said, do not, he, t he was telling me not to offend, he said, pa the pa he said, Paul did not offend the ears of his listeners. And he spoke to me in a parable. He said, Paul did not offend the ears of his listeners. And then I woke up and I knew exactly what that meant because I was praying to him concerning a particular situation about teaching and about people, people teaching others. And then he was telling me that when we teach, we should not offend when we teach, but we should be teaching in love. And so when he started speaking to me for the first time, I was like waking up, I was excited. I was like, that is God, that is God. And um, you know, he, I heard it through my inner man. I heard it through the Holy Spirit. And that was a great thing. And I guess another time when God, um, I heard from God in a dream was when he told me I had a dream of a book. And in the book I saw the words, the key to eternity. And this was like over um, maybe 12 years ago. I saw the book in the vision, said the key to eternity. So I woke up and um, I, I was 
thinking, I was like, God, this is a book, and the name is The Key to Eternity. So I went back to sleep, and I, at that time, I was talking to the Lord. I would talk to Him, and I would tell Him things that was on my heart. And I was like, Lord, is this a book you want me to write, you know? And then um, the Lord would speak to me and say, yes. And then I had visions of the book being in stores, you know, and, you know, seeing it published and everything. And God would tell me, yeah, you, you're going to write it, and, you know, I'm going to help you, and you're going to publish it. And so, well, you know, well, all we know, 10 years later, you know, it came to pass. So, you know, God does the miraculous. Whatever He shows you in dreams and visions, write it down because it will come to pass. You know, it may not be in the time that you want it to be. I want it to be to come to pass way back then. But God knew, you know, His time is perfect. He knew that it would be published and it would be, you know, together when He was ready for it. So we just have to be patient. And just know that whatever he shows you in visions and dreams, whatever he tells you will come to pass. Just like he told Habakkuk, write the vision down. So write your visions down that God tells you. Write the things down that God speaks to you. Write the things down that you dream about that is from God because it will come to pass. And not only that, you can go back and read it over it and it would encourage you. And it will strengthen you to hold on to believe what you are believing God for. Okay, so everything he promises you will come to pass. So I thank you for allowing me to come into your home and share the word of the mighty God with you. So I don't want to close the program without offering you salvation. So repeat the salvation prayer with me and God will transform you. He will change your life. Say, Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sin. I turn from the world and I turn toward you. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that God raised you from the dead. Come into my heart and make me new. Fill me with your spirit. Empower me to do all that you have called me to do that I may fulfill my divine destiny. If you said that, you are a born-again Christian. Call us and let us know we want to celebrate with you. God bless. Thank you for joining us and inviting us into your homes. If you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life today, we welcome you to the family of God in the body of Christ. If you enjoyed today's message and was moved and encouraged and would like to receive a free copy of Joanne's first book, The Key to Eternity, While Supplies Last, please call, email, or write to us. The contact information is now being displayed on your screen. The Key to Eternity is a powerful guide to living a blessed and abundant life while preparing for eternity with God. It will encourage you to operate in God's power today and entrust Him with your tomorrow. We also encourage you to visit our website, houseofprayer.org. Our current events calendar, daily scripture, and godly words of encouragement are provided so that you can apply the Word of God to your life in order to be what God desires you to be and to do what God desires you to do. Now from Abundant Living on behalf of our production staff and Joanne, this is Jerry Young. May God bless you abundantly and we will see you next time. Abundant Living is produced by House of Prayer Ministries that is supported by your generous tax-deductible contributions.